What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin. I also host Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today we'll be chatting with Cyrus Satsas from Locked On Warriors. As once again, the Warriors are on top of the NBA, winning their fourth title in eight years. Is it time to start calling this Warriors team a dynasty? Plus, what does this ring do for Steph Curry's legacy. But first, a quick message from my friends over at Bet Online, because with Bet Online, it continues to be your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Find the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball. They've actually also got you covered for all the fighting that you could imagine with MMA, UFC, boxing, doesn't matter. They got you for golf, they got everything you could possibly need over at Bet Online. They have you for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, the NBA draft, and more. And speaking of the NBA draft, right now you can take a look at the odds over at Bet Online for who is going to go number one overall in this year's NBA draft. Right now, Jabari Smith Jr., the favorite at minus 180, Chet Holmgren at plus 135, and then Paolo Bencaro, a distant third at plus 600. So for all of that and more, head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action available to you. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Joining us now is, of course, Cyrus Satsas from Locked On Warriors. You can follow on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. We've got Cyrus on a mobile, thankfully, yeah. here to, to celebrate the Warriors winning yet another title back on top of the NBA. Fourth title, eight years. Steph Curry finally gets his finals MVP. Cyrus, I'm just going to tee you up with one word here. Dynasty? Oh yeah, I, I I don't. It's so I I think I heard was it Simmons or somebody who who like kind of threw that. Under, I haven't heard his newest episode, the full one yet, so I don't know uh, if they what they talked about in the dynasty segment. But I know a lot of Warriors fans are listening to his show because he's a Celtics guy, you know. And, and and for a lot of columnists, he inspired a lot of people. I love his writing. I love his podcast. Anyways, but he did diminish the Warriors dynasty. That was the first time I've heard anyone really diminish it. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that the Warriors had a dynasty and. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it absolutely is. It's, um, it's, I mean, to have this type of run, six NBA finals appearances in eight years, you know, four championships in eight years. Um, like if this isn't a dynasty, I don't know what is, I mean, like, you know, the, the Jordan, I know the Jordan bulls are clearly one, but, uh, you know, it's, they, they equal each other in terms of the appearance number. I know bull, the Jordan bulls got two more titles, um, I wrote a whole column about this, like back when I, in my writing days, uh, which I haven't done lately, but um, I, I, I did a whole story on that, the very definition of a dynasty and whether or not, you know, what qualifies and, you know, whether or not the Warriors can constitute themselves as a dynasty. And I absolutely do. I thought they were a dynasty just from that five year run, um, given just how it was arguably the most dominant five year run in NBA history. And just to add another title, I, I just don't know what would be a dynasty. If it's not this, if that makes sense, so no, absolutely, and I think when when you look at you know the the more recent the the dynasties that are more recent for people, right? I think you have to look at probably everybody wants to you know point towards the MJ Bulls. There's a dynasty, but I also yeah. think you you take a look at the Shaq and Kobe era Lakers. That's another dynasty. You take a look at this version of the Warriors. That's a dynasty, and then I think you also give credit to the San Antonio Spurs, who maybe they didn't quite have you know their championships all packed into like as close of a window, but that was absolutely a dynasty that had a lot of to, longevity yeah. to it for sure. Agree. hundred percent agree. Yeah. So you. when, when we look at this, Cyrus, where to you, where does this championship rank across the, the four chips during this era of warriors basketball? Um, I know that was like, a, that was actually ended up being a topic of discussion on locked on warriors. Uh, just because it just depends on your perspective. Right. And sorry about the background noise. Uh, you know, like, like for me, for example, I never envisioned the Warriors winning any world championships. Like until that final second tick down in game six against the Cavaliers in 2015, I, you know, I just could not believe that the Warriors would ever win. It never had happened in my lifetime. Um, you know, it hadn't happened in 40 years. So that was just special in and of itself, you know, to beat LeBron James on top of everything else. I know they were shorthand a little bit, um, but in terms of legacy, I don't think there's any doubt that this one bears more weight and more significance and, and just has more cachet just because, you know, there were, for some reason, you know, I, you know, I guess it, that also depends on perspective, but a lot of people still had doubts about Stephen Curry's greatness, about this Warriors team's greatness. There were a lot of holes that people could uh, poke 
in terms of, uh, you know, critique. Um, but I think this really silenced a lot of that. I, I especially that game four performance, um, you know, because that was another topic of discussion was, you know, where does that game four rank among all the NBA finals, you know, greatest performances? It was, you know, and we determined it's it's top five. I mean, there's, you know, out, like Jordan's 98 a shot in 98 to win the series, his final shot in the NBA finals. I think that's number one, that that overall game at that moment. But yeah, then there's just a lot of other ones that really kind of bear their own weight in terms of importance. And um, yeah, I mean, we decided, we, we determined that as a top five moment. And so it just gave a lot of gravity to this Warriors team and its argument for its placement among the all-time greats, you know? So I think the second championship is really special in that regard. I'm, I'm lobbing in Hakeem Olajuwon's block on John Starks. There you one go. Of those moments. That's another. Yeah, that's okay. another all-time great finals moment. Yes. And I've got. I've got a. I've got a rep for Houston just a little bit in here. Absolutely. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I. I've had nothing but quite a bit of usual, unusual, glowing praise for the Warriors as of late. So I need to at least, you know, I need to get back to my Houston Dude, just a little you. bit here. No, but. Was, um, I'm with you. Especially, and so you mentioned, you know, the, the word right there, legacy, right? And that gets thrown around a lot in NBA circles. And, and it gets thrown around a lot when you're discussing a guy like Steph Curry. So to you, Cyrus, what does this run, this ring, this finals MVP, right? All of it. What does it mean for Steph's legacy, right? Where is he at right now as far as the, the all-timers are concerned? Yeah, I've had some fun shows uh since the warriors won the championship because suddenly you get to have these kind of discussions and it bears it just it connects directly there is a direct correlation there um because stephen curry with this finals mvp with this performance i mean there are so many like you know if you follow stat news for example on twitter like just to see it dominate the feed i heard someone else talking about that too it was just staggering what stephen curry was doing i mean whether or not it was his, his scoring average on the road, second only all-time to Michael Jordan, um, his his three-point shooting percentage, greatest all-time, uh, despite the 0-for-9 game. I mean, despite going 0-for-9, he still easily set the mark. I, it was just – it was incredible. So I, I have him in my top ten now. I'll read off my top ten to actually to you. Uh, I, I, this is going straight off memory. I hope I can get this right. Um, and I'll try to go, I guess, uh, ten to one. So I had Larry Bird at number ten. Um, and, and I really think that's low for him, but it's just, there's just so many great players. It's hard to, you know, do this. Uh, number nine, Tim Duncan. Um, I now have number eight, Stephen Curry. I did not have him in the top 10 before. Okay. And with this performance, he pushed Shaq out. Um, so Shaquille O'Neal, I'm really sorry, but you're no longer, uh, in the top 10. Number seven, Kobe Bryant. Uh, number six, Wilt Chamberlain. Number five, Bill Russell. Uh, this is going to piss a lot of people off, but I put LeBron James number four. Um, he has just not impressed me Ooh. enough in terms of mental toughness. And um, and I just have a hard time digging the fact that he just bounces around so much. He's, I mean, basketball is still a team sport. And I just, and this is just a personal thing. But for me, sticking with the team over the bulk of your career means something. And, um, you know, anyway, so, and then number three, I, I flip-flop with this. Number three, number two, Kareem and Magic Johnson. And then Jordan number one. What do you think? I think that's a, I think that's a really solid top ten. And I think that especially because I'm right there where where you had Shaq as the one like on the cusp right of being you know in the top ten, and and Curry the one you know pushing him out. I think that's a fair list overall. Um, and and I, I'm very curious to to know our listeners' top ten list. And if you're if you're listening to this, you can go to our yeah our locked on NBA YouTube page and go let you know let us know how you feel about Cyrus's top ten list in the comment section on YouTube. But Cyrus, this is a I know this is a great time for you. I know you're ready for the parade. I know you're ready for all the celebrations. Uh, I you know I, I look congratulations to you. Congratulations to the Warriors on yet another title. And of course. For all the celebration, for all the breakdown, everything that this title means, you're going to have us covered for all of that and more over at Locked on Warriors. I appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA of with course, me. Of course, man. Anytime, Jackson. Thanks, brother.